dental and education development, technical and vocational training, literacy enhancement, education is on the move. On Education Spotlight, we look at developments within the education sector and how Guyanese can take advantage of the opportunities available. Hello and welcome to another episode of Education Spotlight. This week, we're going to be talking about all the developments in hinterland education delivery. With me is the Deputy Chief Education Officer for Amerindian Hinterland Education Development, Mr. Marty D'Souza. Thank you for joining us, Mr. D'Souza. Thank you so much for having me, Adana. So let's just jump right into it. What have we been doing to transform education in the hinterlands and bridging the gap between the coast and hinterland education delivery? Well, I must say that quite a lot has been happening, actually, um, as of recent. Um, starting with, of course, the position that was created within the Ministry of Education, that of the position of a DCEO ahead. Uh, you introduced me as Amerindian and Hinterland Education Development. Um, we're making a concerted effort to try to improve how the performance or how we um, serve our children in the hinterland. And as such, the, this office was created. Um, if we are to look at some of the programs that were instituted since 2020, moving into 2021, we know that COVID um, struck and uh, many schools were closed. All the mm -hmm. schools were closed. Um, out in the hinterland, we were affected even more so by the pandemic, um, by the fact that uh, you know we were not, uh, we did not have access to online learning. So even though um, schools in the city or in the coastline might have had access to um, continuity, we were more or less cut off in the hinterland. However, we have been creative and we have risen to the challenge and we have moved beyond. Um, and so a couple of things that we can draw on right now, for example, is the expansion of the Guyana Learning Channel. Um, if you, as you go out into the hinterland, you will find that many schools are currently equipped with um, smart televisions where the learning channel is actually being broadcasted into the classrooms. Um, we have EduFM, of course. Um, right now, many schools also have access to that. And in fact, even in their homes. Uh, as opposed to having the televisions in schools, we are actually having EduFM being broadcasted in their homes in the hinterland regions. Um, and that is just one of the reach, one of the ways we are reaching into our hinterland communities at the moment. Okay, so I know we are always looking at ways to improve education delivery. Are we looking at um, building any more schools in the hinterlands and stuff like that? Um, well, yes, I, I can say that currently there's a project ongoing, uh, what we call the school mapping exercise, where we have been traveling across all the hinterland regions and getting an actual physical um, survey, doing a physical condition survey of how the school, the condition the schools are in. And that will allow us also to prioritize how we not only um, improve physically, but also if there's a need for extension and a need for new schools. So we are being informed by actual empirical evidence. So moving into 2023, um, definitely we will see many improved schools, infrastructure, and also new schools being erected. Okay, I want to talk, uh, I want to shift a little bit towards dorm schools within uh, hinterland communities. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes we have some complaints coming out of that. What are we doing mm -hmm. to monitor the situations there? Um, we've also had a consultancy firm that did uh, quite an extent, some extensive work on dormitory schools. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, we at the Ministry of Education, we are armed with the results of that study. And we are using that study to inform us how we are going to move forward with our dormitories. Uh, for example, we want to ensure that there is a particular standard across all dorms in, uh, in the country. Um, and so we're using this, we're using the results of the consultancy that was done to, uh, to ensure that we improve how we deliver education, we improve how we serve our children um, in the dormitories across the regions. Okay, now let, let me ask you this. I know you would have mentioned the Learning Channel and uh, EduFM uh, is one of the major ways that we are delivering education mm -hmm. to our students in the hinterland. Mm -hmm. I want to touch a little bit on the smart classrooms mm -hmm. that we've introduced. How receptive have students been in the Hitland towards this initiative? Um, they have been really, really um, receptive, actually, because I could recall earlier on, I think it was sometime 2021 heading into um, this year. Um, we've actually had an experiment where we beamed the lessons from Georgetown and across the coast. We connected schools across the hinterland, secondary schools across the hinterland. 
Uh, we provided extra lessons by specialist teachers for uh, children across all the most of the schools in the hinterland. And it was one of a kind. Um, actually, what, what it did for us then is that it proved to us that online education across the hinterland can actually work. Um, once there's connectivity, once there's strong connectivity, um, in some cases where there wasn't any Wi-Fi, you know, we had uh, we made use of the data, digital data, mm -hmm. and we connected classrooms. And so moving forward, um, smart classrooms, it's something that is here to stay. And we can only improve on how we provide um, for the children in all the schools across the hinterland. Um, of course, we are still constrained by connectivity, mm -hmm. but that is something that we are also working on and in the very near future. We are hopeful that we can um, counter those challenges and move forward with our um, digital classrooms. Okay, I know we are going to be um, we're on the verge of opening for another school school mm -hmm. school year school term. What more can we expect in terms of Amherst and Hinterland education development? Well, one of the things we are always trying to work towards is um, ensure that we have rounded individuals. So moving into a new academic year, um, one can look forward to not only academics, not only technology in the classrooms, um, but we're also looking at focus on, focusing on sports to ensure that when a child um, exits secondary school, we have a well-rounded individual. Um, we're also looking at including TVET as part of our program uh, for school leavers. So we may have a school in the hinterland that might not, um, a primary top, for example, um, where the children might not proceed on to, to uh, a secondary school. But we want to ensure that wherever these children are, that we provide a TVET subject, which they can be certified at the end of the program. Um, we're looking at the SCCP program, for example, so where we have primary tops. We want to ensure that the children who leave school at the end of a cycle uh, doesn't leave just like that. They would have a certificate to come out with. Okay, thank you so much for that, Mr. D'Souza, and thank you so much for your time today. I'll definitely have to have you back sometime during the new school year so you can talk about all those developments and their implementations. Definitely, definitely. thank you for having me. <laughs> this has been another episode of Education Spotlight. Thank you for watching, and remember to join us again next week for another edition. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.